What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. By popular demand, I'm doing a video on how to replace the alternator, AC, and power steering belts. So the accessory belts basically. There's one for each of them. So I'm just going to get right into it. Let's pop the hood and change them out. Alright, so before we start, we actually want to disconnect the negative battery terminal because we'll be disconnecting the alternator and you don't want any sparks and bad things happening. It'll short out your computer and everything. So just disconnect the battery terminal. That way we're safe and we can disconnect the alternator. You can get around not disconnecting the alternator, but it's just, it's so easy to do it and taking it out, it's in the way of everything and even though you can do it without it, you're better off just taking the alternator out. All right, so to do this job, you need pretty basic tools. A lot of these are optional. You don't need a jack, you don't need a jack stand, but you do have to get behind the wheel. So if you can get behind there and see well enough, then that's your choice. But I chose to remove the wheel. I don't show you how to remove the wheel in this video because it's optional, but you just take the lug nuts off or jack up the car, take the lug nuts off and remove the wheel. But what I use is a jack, jack stands, gloves, a couple extensions, couple of ratchets but basically what you need is a 10 millimeter socket a 12 and a 14 as well as a 14 millimeter wrench and a 10 millimeter wrench or you could use a 10 millimeter socket I just chose to use a wrench some rust penetrant just because stuff is probably a little rusty needle nose pliers a flashlight and a pry bar so you can tension the power steering belt a torque wrench if you choose to remove the wheel with a 21 millimeter socket if you have stock lug nuts and if not then whatever you use to put your lug nuts on and i just use this to take the lug nuts off but you could use a breaker bar if you want all right so let's get started all right so as you can see it's the alternator right here we have the ac right down there and then we have the power steering right there this is my oil catch can i'll be removing it for this video just so i can get more room to to do stuff and obviously to show you if you're Corolla doesn't have it well it's just gonna have a hose that goes from here right to here from this PCV valve right to the intake this is not part of the car whatsoever so let's uh, I'm gonna take this off and I'll be right back all right so once the oil catch can is removed now we can see everything so let's start with the alternator belt that's the easiest one to take off and we should start with that one because it's the first one on the pulleys so it goes alternator and then towards the inside it's the AC and the power steering pump so, if you go under the alternator, right there you're going to see two bolts on a bracket. So, one is going to be this one right here, and the other one's going to be that one right there. So, that is basically the lock that locks in this bolt, and this bolt is the adjuster. So, there's no tensioner on this belt. It's adjusted by this bracket right here, which moves the alternator up and down. So, let's start with loosening up that bolt, which is a 12 millimeter. So get your 12 millimeter ratchet, stick it on there, and make sure you set it beforehand to loosen. Go to the left. It might be tight, or it might not be as tight. So, I don't know, for me, I'm the one that tightened it last, so I know it's not going to be crazy tight. It's just enough to lock in that, uh, that other bolt on the bracket. So, as you can see, mine already broke loose. I'm just gonna unthread it maybe one or two turns. That's all it needs. The bracket, or sorry, the bolt goes through the alternator and then bolts onto that bracket. And I'll show you later once we get it all uh, loosened what I'm talking about. So once that's loose right there, we wanna get a 14 millimeter and loosen this bolt up right here. This is the top pivot of the alternator. All right, so get yourself a 14 millimeter socket with a ratchet or a wrench, whatever you uh, prefer, and just Give it a couple taps to loosen it. Again, this one also might be tight. Um, obviously it should be tight, but what I'm saying is it might be very tight. And again, I'm the last one that touched this, so it's it's not over tightened, it's just, just enough, just snug. And then a little bit more, so it's fairly easy to loosen up. So as you could see, you probably can't see, but this side, the nut is basically a free floating nut with a little tab on it and this will actually stop when you're spinning the bolt that way it'll help you loosen up the bolt without having to hold on to this nut all right so you want to loosen this bolt by loosening this bolt you're actually pushing the alternator down 
And by doing that, you're freeing up the belt. It should be easy to turn. If it's not, that means the bolt's frozen in this bracket, in which case you'd want to uh, find a way to free it up, whether that's removing the top bolt or removing the, uh, the lock bolt and the top bolt and then removing the alternator with the bracket, or I don't know. But you want a way to, uh, to free this up. So now that it's free, as you can see, the belt is loose. We're going to have to go a little bit more because I still can't get it off. But that's, that's how you do it. The alternator is now loose enough to where I can pry a little bit on the belt and then just slip it off. And then, and then it's going to be connected on the water pump in the back. So just take it off the water pump. And it's also around the crank on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. So it's around the water pump and the crank. But if you can push it off the water pump, it'll slide off the crank. Gravity will do its thing and will push it off the crank as well. All right, so it's off the water pump. Now I can just pull on it and it should come past it fell off the crank like I said and here is the alternator belt all right put that in a safe place I'm actually not replacing these because I just replaced them last year so they're new but I am showing you how to take them all off put them back on adjusting the tension on it and everything I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video but I'm mentioning it now better late than never huh all right so next step is to disconnect the alternator like I said in the beginning of the video you can not you can do this job without disconnecting it but it's in the way of the AC bracket and the AC and everything. So it takes two, two minutes to disconnect this and take it out. And it's, it's worth it in my opinion. You have this 10 millimeter nut right here, which holds on the positive terminal. It's a special nut because it has a washer built into it. So don't lose it. I mean, yeah, you can use a regular nut, but you might as well use the, uh, the one that came with it if you can. So put it back on. It's important to uh, put this little boot back on here just in case. I mean, we did disconnect the negative battery terminal, but you never know. All right, now you take this connector for the regulator and press on the tab and wiggle it. And maybe by tomorrow it'll come out. Ah, there we go. Sometimes it's stuck in there really good because it's actually a water sealed connector. It has a little piece of rubber in there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's the uh, the red circular silicone rubber looking thing. That way water can't get in there. Um, this wiring harness is connected with a couple clips. I'm just going to take some needle nose pliers and squeeze the clip and it'll come out. It has two little fingers on each side. So uh, squeezing them together will make it slide through the hole, hopefully. If not, you can just pry it out because otherwise it's going to take forever. Now on the bottom it has a little slidey tab, which we might be able to get right now, or we can just get it when the alternator comes off, which is I think what I'll do. To get this alternator off, we need to fully remove that locking bolt that locks the alternator onto the tensioner, or tensioner bracket I should say. So you wanna fully remove that. Once I get this bracket off, or the alternator off, I can show you what the bracket looks like and then you'll understand what has to happen in order for this to come out and uh, I think you'll get a, a better idea of what everything looks like if you don't already. So completely remove this bottom bolt. The alternator might want to fall down more, which that's normal. This is the bolt that holds the alternator on on the bottom. There's one that holds it on the top and one that holds it on the bottom. Put that bolt aside. Now with your 14 millimeter or by hand if it'll come off by hand, simply remove this bolt right here that holds the alternator on the top. Careful, you will lose that nut, just like I did because I didn't catch it in time. And you'll notice that windshield washer flu fluid tank is in the way, but that's okay because all that's holding this in is this 10 millimeter bolt right here that if you just remove, then you can take the whole tank, slide it forward and sideways at the same time, and you can just lift it up and out of the way. Just like that. And it might not be completely out, but it's enough 
allow you to completely remove this bolt. Now that this is removed, the alternator is free to slide out. Like I said, there are a couple of connections down here. Well, there is a connection. This is this slidey tab right here. So what you want to do is get a little flathead screwdriver, pry up on this tab that holds it in, and uh, then pry up and out. All right, and just like that, slide the alternator out, and we have exposed the bracket that adjusts the alternator. This is the bolt that I was talking about that adjusts it up and down, gives it tension, and then the locking bolt that also goes through the alternator is this one right here, which I'm gonna put back, that way I don't forget where it comes from. It goes through the alternator right here, and then locks into this bracket. So just like this bracket works right here, where it pivots up and down, it's gonna be the same for this AC tensioner pulley. So what you wanna do is you wanna get your 14 millimeter. Okay, I'm gonna have to get a wrench. You get a 14 millimeter wrench, or if you have a really small socket, that'll work too. And you wanna break this bolt loose, or the nut, I guess, for the, uh, for the tensioner. Pull up on it, and it should break loose. Should. There we go. All right. Once this breaks loose, this will be free to move around and you can get 14 millimeter socket on this and loosen it up and that should relieve tension from this belt. Now, don't take this bolt all the way out, obviously just, just enough to get the uh, belt off. You don't want to loosen it from the bracket and then have it fall and everything. Then that's just more of a hassle. All right, if the tensioner doesn't want to slide easily, just wiggle it around. Eventually it'll slide. And once you can get it loose enough to get the belt off, just, well, take the belt off. And this one wraps around the crank. So if you can see it but right there it wraps around the crank take it off the crank and here is our AC belt I'm gonna put this one right there and the last one we have to remove is the power steering belt that's right there wraps around the water pump and the power steering pump all right so to get the power steering pump loose and get the belt off I took the wheel off you don't necessarily have to I just took the wheel off for video purposes and next I'm gonna take off this little splash shield here Held on by two 10 millimeter bolts, and this one as well. And that falls down. And the reason I took the splash shield off is because once you take that off, you can see that bolt right there, which is a 14 millimeter. That is the bottom bolt of the power steering bracket. And that's the one you want to loosen. You just break it loose and that will give you access to move the power steering pump back and forth and uh, adjust it. The nut on the back is a locking nut, or it's welded onto the bracket, so you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is break this loose. You don't even have to remove it much. I'm removing it, It's I can only get a click at a time in here, but if you have a longer socket or maybe a uh, swivel extension, which I have, just not near me, um, but all you have to do is just break this loose, maybe even with a wrench, and uh, that should allow you to pivot the power steering pump. But before we do that, we have to also break this one loose, because that's the adjuster up top. So let's do that. And for this, I'm gonna use my 14 millimeter wrench because I don't want to try and fit a socket in here. All right, so once this is loose, as you can see, the power steering pump can pivot. And what you want to do is push it forward, grab the belt, and slip it off. And there you go. Both the water pump pulley and the power steering pulley can spin freely. So if you just grab the belt and do what I did, just slip it off on the top and then spin the pulley, it'll uh, drive the belt off. 
So here we have our power steering belt. And that's it, that's all of it. And if for some reason you need to change this pulley, let's say it's making noise or it has play, right now mine has play because it's loose, the nut is loose, but all you do is just simply completely remove this nut. And be careful because it has a big washer here. Remove the nut and then remove the pulley. So all you have to do is just either buy a new bearing and replace it. Mine is fine, so I'm just going to leave it. What you want to do is just drive it out through here, and remove this snap ring, or you just buy a new pulley. That's probably the best way to go because sometimes gunk gets in here. Actually, there's little tiny debris in there, rocks and whatnot. So I think I'm going to get a little screwdriver or a wire brush and clean that up since I have it out. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how you do it. Super simple. So to put this back, if you install the new one or are reusing your old one, just uh, put it back, put the washer back, put it back on the little shaft, press it on nice and firm, make sure the washer stays on, and then just start the nut by hand. And obviously don't tighten it yet because we can't lock this thing in place. I'm actually gonna spray this with some penetrant and uh, see if I can get it to move a little better, maybe uh, maybe slide up and down better. I don't want to get any oils on the pulleys. I got a little bit of oil on this, that's not a big deal. Uh, maybe I'll clean it up with some brake cleaner, but if you get any oils on the pulleys, just make sure you clean them with some brake cleaner. Um, get, the, get the oils off, otherwise they'll squeak the rubber so they'll swell, and you don't want any of that. Let's snug this down a little bit, and let's get to putting the belts back on. And let's get to putting the belts back on. All right, that pulley's on. Let's start with the power steering belt. All right, so just like uninstalling, installation is just the reverse of that process. So take your new belt. Obviously, like I said, I'm reusing mine, but you want to compare the new belt to the old belt. Make sure it has the same amount of ribs here, the same, uh, uh, the same length. So what you want to do is stretch it out or stretch both out at the same time and compare them. Make sure they're the same length. And if they are, then let's go ahead and put it right on. So just like taking it off, I'm going to start from the top here. You can notice the water pump has two slots for belts to go on. The power steering, the power steering belt goes on the inner slot. And this is the belt that goes on the crank and on the, uh, and on the alternator. All right, so I'm going to go from underneath. Put the belt on the power steering pump and then just manually turn it and it'll slide on. Just keep turning it until it seats itself on the water pump as well. And that's it. Then we can go up top and snug up the bolt. Okay, so what I did is I got myself a pry bar and I'm gonna stick it between the water pump and the power steering reservoir. And my reservoir is made of metal and that's the only reason I'm doing this. If it's a plastic one, which there shouldn't be on this car, but if for some reason you're watching this and the reservoir is plastic, do not do this. Find a different way to pry or put tension on it. But because mine is metal, I can put a tiny bit of pressure on it. So I'm putting the pry bar between the water pump and the power steering reservoir. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of tension on it. And as I'm holding that tension, I'm going to tighten up this bolt to lock it in. We can always adjust it later, which is the point of this uh, bolt being up top and so accessible. You can always adjust it later after the car is uh, running or after all the belts are on. That way you can adjust it with the car running and see what's, uh, what squeaks and what doesn't. Uh, but I'm going to show you a trick on how to get it right the first time. So once that's done, just snug this up. That way it doesn't move. And let's go back underneath because there's more and let's go back underneath because there's more room down there okay so what you want to do is you want to take the belt try and twist it 90 degrees it should easily twist 90 degrees but not past this feels just about right so i think this is perfect i'm going to leave it right here and because i'm leaving it right here i'm going to snug up my bolt all right so if i was to adjust it still then I would leave it a little bit loose. I would just bottom it out, but because I'm done adjusting it, I'm gonna make it snug, and then I'm gonna give it just a little bit more. All right, 
That's good. Let's do the same thing to the top one. This one should already be snug, but I'm just gonna put my wrench on it and just give it a little bit more. There we go. That's tight. Now let's move on to putting on the AC belt. All right, so same thing goes for the AC belt. You wanna compare the ribs, compare the length. In my case, this is the same one I just took off, so I know it's correct. Um, I'd have some issues if I took off the wrong one. But anyway, put it on all the pulleys so it goes on this tensioner, on the AC obviously, and on the inner ribs of the crank. The crank, just like the water pump, will have two, two places for belts to ride on. It goes on the inner one. And you might need to loosen up the tensioner a little bit because in this case the crank doesn't just easily spin so you can't do like we did for the water pump and power steering you can't just simply slide it on all right so now with belt not tensioned we're going to tighten this back up put some tension on it at the same time we want to check and make sure that the belt is on all the ribs of the pulleys it hasn't fallen off or it it's seated itself correctly now again the same procedure for tensioning this applies so i'm going to slowly tighten it now that that's tight i'm going to check for tension so you want to pick the longest side between the pulleys the longest stretch of belt that has no pulley which is going to be on the bottom for this and I'm gonna go there, check the tension. So even though it might not seem like very long, this is the longest stretch. And it looks like I actually tighten it too much because I can only turn it about a quarter of a turn. That's 45 degrees and then it becomes hard to turn. So in that case, I don't wanna ruin my bearings on the pulleys. So I'm gonna back off on this a little bit and then we'll check it again. That's better. Now you don't want it too loose because then it's just going to squeal and slip on the pulleys and then it's just going to, one, be annoying because it's loud and two, destroy the belt. So I think now I made it a little too loose. I'm going to go one turn back, or forward I should say. I'm going to tighten it one turn. Let's see what that did. I think that feels perfect. So I can turn it 90 degrees and that's it and then it just wants to stop. Maybe I'll go a little bit looser. I can always tighten it, but I don't want to ruin my bearings. And if it squeaks, it squeaks. I'll just tighten it a little bit more, no big deal. Now you get your, get your wrench, tighten the, uh, the nut up that's on this pulley. It basically locks it in, and it also acts as the retainer for the pulley, so it's, uh, it's kind of important. Okay, now just like with everything else, you don't want to go crazy tight on this you just want to snug it and then give it a little bit more so that's bottomed out and I just gave it a little bit more until the wrench stopped obviously like you saw I wasn't using the full length of the wrench so really there's not a lot of tension on on this uh, on this nut I'm not torquing it down a lot I'm sure it has a torque spec but I could never fit a torque wrench down in there so oh well all right so now comes time to installing the alternator again Move the washer fluid reservoir out of my way or not it's a good time to inspect it right now make sure it's not cracked or has burn spots or whatever it's probably easier to start with the bottom bolt just to put it through the alternator right now that way it's started otherwise you can't see the hole so I would take it out of here it's also a good idea to spray this with it's also a good idea to drop your bolts because they like to be on the floor. Why would they be in the car to hold things up? Anyway, it's also a good idea to spray this with some penetrant. That way things can slide around easy and uh, not freeze up on you or not give you a hard time when you're trying to put them in. Now, an important thing to note is this block right here that's threaded goes with the hole on the upper side of it. So with the hole on the bottom, like this, would be upside down. This long bolt needs to follow the curve of the bracket. 
well, not the bolt is curved, but it should go on the bottom side of the bracket. It shouldn't want to stick up like this. If you put it that way, you can't put it in your alternator, it won't go in. Basically, you want the bolt to go to point downward. And on this piece of metal, the threads for the locking bolt need to be on the top. All right, so slide your bolt through the alternator. Put, leave that there. Slide the alternator on the top bracket. Then take your top bolt, put it in here, put it through. If you wanna put the nut on, that's fine. If not, you can wait. There we go, it's started. And now the tricky part is to get this started. And it's tricky because you can't really see much down there. So you wanna pull the bolt out of the alternator as much as you can. That way it can go over the bracket. And then you somehow have to try and line up that hole in the bracket with the alternator and everything else. It can be a little frustrating, but. All right, so I got it started. Putting that uh, rust penetrant, penetrating oil on there really helped because it makes everything slide. And once the threads catch on that bolt, it makes them really easy to keep going on. So what I'm gonna do now is connect the alternator back up before I forget, put all the brackets where they're supposed to go because this is very close to the exhaust manifold and you don't want these connections flopping around and melting. So there was this little bracket here on the bottom that had that little tab that we pulled. Obviously it would have been easier if I remembered to do it while the alternator was still out, but whatever. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna connect the alternator first. That way none of this can flop around. Plug this in. All right, and now I can try and put this bracket back on. There we go. All right, I got that on. Put this little clip back in. And let's tighten this down. Now this is brass, a brass stud, so you don't have to go tight, you just snug it, that's it. I just bottomed it out, gave it maybe a quarter, an eighth of a turn. That's it, I'm done. I'm gonna put this boot back on. The alternator's connected, everything's clipped in. So let's get to uh, putting the belt back on. And again, for the third time, and this goes for every belt you'll ever do, compare it to the new one, make sure it's the right one. All right, so before we go any further, let's put the windshield washer fluid tank back in. That way it's bolted in and out of our way. It had this bolt with the large washer. You want a large washer on this because it's plastic tab, so you want it to uh, you want it to be able to clamp it down. I'm gonna put some PB blaster on this just to make the threads slide easier because they were pretty rusty coming out. So I just want it to prevent some extra rust if possible and uh, make installation a little bit easier. Now this is just plastic, so I'm actually just gonna take this socket, tighten it up by hand, and just leave it at that. Obviously I don't wanna over tighten this, break the bolt or crack this plastic, and then I have a floppy windshield washer fluid tank. So now that that's done, you wanna take the alternator belt, put it around the alternator, obviously, and then throw it on the floor. You put it around the alternator, And then it's gonna to wanna to go around the water pump right here. So you'll have to fish it behind the motor mount, bring it around the water pump and just drop it there. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. And now you should have enough slack on it to put it around the crank. There we go. Another reason why the wheel being off is a bonus. Now while we're under here, before we go back up, this is a good opportunity to put this splash shield back in. There's two screws that thread into a plastic insert. They're 10 millimeters. Get your extension and a ratchet and tighten them up. Now these are just threading. Now these are just threading into plastic, like I said, so you don't have to tighten them really tight. Just bottom them out, and that should be enough holding the ratchet by the head, so there's really not much torque being applied there. And now we're clear to put the wheel back on. Since we're still under here, 
and then go back up. All right, now I didn't show removing the wheel because that's kind of straightforward. But what I am going to show is torquing the wheel because that's important. So I put the lug nuts on. The torque on this car is 76 foot-pounds. Uh, I'm actually going to torque them to 80 because I have bigger wheels on and different studs. Or, I'm sorry, different lug nuts. And I'm just going to go to 80. The way my steering wheel is turned right now, I can't really put, push down on the torque wrench. I'm going to have to pull up. But That's one. And you want to go in a crisscross pattern. That's two. This is not that great for your back. And then let's just go around again one more time. All right, and I should also mention that while I was torquing them, not the whole weight of the car was on the ground or on the wheel, only part of it. There we go. Now the car's on the ground, ready to go. We just have to tighten the uh, alternator bracket. All right, so now that you've seen how this bracket works, I'm just gonna do it without showing you. So basically I'm tightening on the bolt, which is gonna pull the bracket up towards the top of it. And in turn, that's gonna tighten up the belt. And again, I'm just gonna go until I feel like it's tight enough. And then I'm gonna check it. The longest stretch of belt on the alternator belt is actually gonna be up top between the alternator and the water pump. Um, I loosened this quite a bit, so I have a long ways to go. All right, this is getting tight here. I can feel the tension on the ratchet, and indeed the belt is tight. Now let's check it. So like I said, the longest stretch of belt is between the alternator and the power steer, or I mean the uh, water pump. So I'll just take it and twist it 90 degrees. This to me feels perfect, actually. You can't really see, but maybe I can... Bring it right here. When I twist the belt, it will easily twist 90 degrees right here under the motor mount. That's the halfway point, and then it'll stop. So I think I tightened this one pretty, pretty well. I'm gonna snug up this bolt and then the lock bolt on the bottom. Snug them both up, and then we're all set. All right, it's time to snug this lock bolt up down here. I call it a lock bolt, but. It's just the bolt that goes through the alternator and locks the adjuster in. When I put it in by hand, I had it almost bottomed out, so that makes it a little bit easier for me to do it with the ratchet because I don't have to go for so long. It's You don't have much room in here, so you kind of have to go one click at a time. All right, I feel it getting snug. And just like the other ones, I'm going to make this snug and then give it maybe an eighth of a turn. There we go. Just a little bit more. I, I can feel it. Oh, now it stopped. Now it's just completely bottomed out that's all I needed feels perfect now let's do the top one and that was a 14 millimeter and like I said before we don't have to worry about holding the nut because it has that little shank right there that holds itself basically so just snug this up once it's bottomed out I'm just gonna give it another eighth of a turn all right that's snug I'm gonna give it another eighth of a turn to a quarter of a turn there we go that's tight. Put this wiring where it was supposed to be. And in my case, I'm gonna have to, well, clean up my mess. But also I'm gonna have to put the oil catch can back. All right, and last but not least, put on your negative battery terminal. Hold it down all the way while you tighten it. You don't have to make it crazy tight, just snug it up. Obviously make sure it doesn't fall off and most importantly, and most importantly make sure it doesn't move around, which it doesn't. All right, so we're all set. All right, so as you can see, it runs great. No squeals, no weird sounds. The belts look straight. That's it. Job is complete. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.